Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to give um, uh, a brief overview of where we are in terms of uh, the MTPS and and uh, entry point uh, specifically. So, uh, just to uh, to look back over over the last uh, last twelve months and, and and where we are. So, first issue is in relation to uh, the care, the uh, career average value earnings, and obviously that came into play from first of April 14. Uh, so we've had now the first year of that, that ran through to uh, the 1st of March uh, 15. So the first benefit statements have been sent out on the back of that. Now across the country there has been significant uh, difficulties in relation uh, to getting all that information together to allow those benefit statements um, to be sent out by the deadline uh, of the 1st of August. Uh, here in Shropshire, uh, we did manage to receive all the data back from all the employers uh, by the date that we said that was required. Um, so from that point of view, it's been, it's been very successful. Uh, there are, as, as, uh, as Teddy alluded to, there have been some, some issues and some uh, best practice, some improvement that can be made to the overall uh, process. Um, so that's going to be picked up and followed up over the, uh, over the, uh, the, next, uh, the next few weeks and, uh, and months. Uh, the other one of the other big things that, that's come into play uh, from this, uh, this financial year, from the 1st of April 15, um, has been the introduction of the, the pension board. So this has been uh, trailed now for, for quite a while. It actually came into being from, from, from April. Now, that diagram, uh, which is a little bit out of focus, and it's just, <coughs> just my eyes, um, is, uh, is, is one of the changes that have been made as a result of uh, the Lord uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, review that was undertaken back in uh, March 20, uh, 2011. Now, there were 27 recommendations that came out of that, um, and all of that government that is now around the, uh, the, the, the LGPS has been put in, put in place. So on the left-hand side, we have the Schema, Schema Advisory Board. Now, that was set up as a shadow advisory board, but from the 1st of April this year, um, it's actually been set up as a statutory body. Now, what that does is that collects the information from all of the 89 pension funds around the, uh, around the country um, and puts it all together into an annual, uh, annual report. The last annual report is, uh, was produced in, uh, around about the end of uh, April this year. Uh, so it gets all the information in terms of uh, you know, numbers of, uh, of employees, number, uh, sorry, numbers of, um, uh, of members, uh, funding levels, um, numbers of plates across the country, and tries to uh, provide a national picture rather than the sort of the disjointed information that was there previously in relation to each fund running its own particular, particular affairs. So that information now um, is, is, uh, is available, it provides advice through to uh, the, in our case, Rocky County Pension Fund, but also provides advice through to uh, the DCLG, which is the next box on, uh, and DCLG, Department of um, uh, Communities and Government, uh, provides regulations and guidance through. So all of that national information then uh, is provided through into, into uh, some form of guidance to go forward. Local Government uh, Association, so this uh, provides uh, 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 information and protects the, um, uh, the um, uh, requirements of the employers. <coughs> so the LGA feeds into uh, the, the, the process on behalf of the employers within it. Uh, pensions regulator has been in, in place for a while now, obviously provides all regulation uh, for pensions and, and uh, links in to the Department of Work and Pensions. So that's the national picture, and then over on the right hand side you've got the Pensions Committee and the City Pensions Board. So the Pensions Committee has been uh, in place for a while, this, this provides the, the overall uh, governance and decision making for everything in relation to Shropshire County. Um, uh, pension fund. So, when it comes to uh, the valuations that are undertaken, when it comes to uh, appointing the uh, the value, appointing the uh, the uh, fund managers that we have, any advisors, all of those decisions are made within the pensions committee. So, the new item that's been added in in relation to the pensions board um, that came into play from the 1st of April uh, this year, that provides another layer of governance then around the whole of the uh, of, of the pension fund. So this is looking at uh, the advice that's coming from those of the boards um, that I've mentioned, and uh, looking at the decisions that are made by the Pensions Committee, and ensuring that all of those things are done appropriately uh, and, uh, and correctly. Now, uh, Pension Board is made up of four members, so uh, the uh, two employer reps, so all of the employers are written to uh, act as well representatives to come forward and put themselves onto the, uh, onto the board, uh, and two member reps as well. Uh, we have a lot more uh, member reps uh, come forward than employee reps, to be fair, um, but we went through an appointment process myself, 
um, and uh, Claire Porter as the, Mon uh, the monitoring officer of the Shropshire Council. Uh, when we appointed appointment board and we appointed four people on onto that. Um, so the two, uh, the two employer uh, reps uh, are Liz Fury uh, from Clark Adams and uh, Stuart Wheeler from Seven Side Housing. Uh, and the two member uh, reps, uh, Pat Hockley and, um, and Mike Morris, who used to be uh, employer, employees uh, at uh, Shropshire Council. So the first meeting of the pension board uh, was held in July. Um, they're two years, the next one will be in, uh, in February, <coughs> and so the work is starting to kick off now in relation to um, uh, uh, what, that, what that board is going to do and what that board is going to do. So, I'll continue with the review of the last uh, mm -hmm. five months. Um, in terms of the funding levels for, um, uh, for the Shropshire uh, scheme, we're now up to a value of just over £1.5 billion. Pounds. In the last 12 months, returns of uh, £173 uh, million came through. So, this is a 13.7% uh, return uh, on the year, which is a big percentage considering, particularly considering the company. <coughs> Um, 30.7%, that, um, that was uh, exceeded its benchmark by 1.4% um, over, uh, over the year. And what the graph uh, is showing is the, uh, the yellow bars, this is, these are all the uh, fund managers uh, that we, uh, we have out of 1.5 billion uh, invested in. Uh, the yellow bars are showing their actual uh, return, and the blue bars are their individual uh, benchmarks. And the first thing that we can see, which is actually quite unusual, is that every single one of our managers made a positive um, return. Now, that's unusual because what we're trying to do is diversify uh, the, the overall uh, portfolio. So you would expect that if there is some bad news in any particular sector, whether it be equities or, or property or infrastructure or bonds, uh, that, that that's, that's evened out by uh, improvements in, in, in other areas or, or the, the reduction is less bad. Um, what you don't expect is for anything to go in one direction. We quite like everything to go in a positive direction, but the, the way that the, the fund is set up is that we, we've been making sure that nothing goes in a negative direction. And you can see the top bar, the whole uh, fund returns, so that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the, the benchmark and the, the returns exceeding uh, it by 1.4%. The next one, uh, GIP, which is infrastructure, you can see considerably out uh, of this benchmark. That's really good. But unfortunately, we've only got about 20 million that's actually invested um, in that particular area. That's, uh, that's uh, infrastructure. Other areas, um, the, the hedge funds perform particularly well. It's about 160 million uh, invested in there. Uh, low growth equities, even in general, uh, third one, that's passive equities. And I'll come on to that in a little, uh, little bit more detail in a, in a, in a moment. Um, there's about 300 million invested in there. So it's not weighted, but just to give you an overall view of, um, of, of where the fund uh, made its returns uh, last year. So that's all, that's all good news. Uh, uh, moving on, <coughs> in terms of uh, the land investment strategy, um, one of the things that we need to do uh, continually is, despite uh, uh, returns and despite a portfolio that seems to be diversifying, uh, we always need to continually review that and consider uh, whether the portfolio is actually set up for what we think is going to happen in the next few years. So we reviewed the investment strategy this year um, and we decided uh, that we would make uh, some changes to that, 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 that strategy. That's gone through committee and that's been, uh, that's been approved and we know in the process of putting those things in place. So what do we actually do in terms of the investment strategy? Well, um, at the moment, uh, well, prior, prior to, the, uh, to the adjustments, we were holding about 25% of the fund um, in index-linked uh, gilts and uh, bonds. And those bonds were split between constrained bonds and corporate bonds. Uh, corporate bonds uh, have not been making great returns, and, and looking into the future, uh, were considered to be perhaps an area that we want to move away from. Our constrained bonds, however, gives more freedom to the managers to seek out uh, uh, better investments, uh, but also doesn't doesn't improve, doesn't, doesn't change the risk profile. Uh, index linked gilts um, are linked very much to the way that our liabilities are valued. So while we had 170 million pounds into um, into the overall fund on the asset side, uh, so you improved your assets by 13.4 percent. If your liabilities are the same, you have gone up by 15 percent. The actual funding position is worse. By investing in gilts. Um, your assets are more closely matched your liabilities. So if you see an, an increase or reduction, it more closely matches that. At the moment, 
we had ten, well, previously we had 10% invested in this in the fields. What we decided to do was we took that all 25% um, and we took 7.5% um, out of corporate bonds, took this 10% out of uh, index linked gilts, and we brought into play two new um, uh, unconstrained uh, bond managers uh, and split, the, uh, split some funding between those, so they got 7% each. And then the remaining 3.5% that we've got left uh, we put into an LDI, which is a liability driven investment. Now, LDI is very complicated, um, and, uh, but, but the, the advantage of an LDI is again, similar to index in the office, it tracks the liabilities of the, um, uh, of, 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 of the associated with the fund. So, if your liability is rising and falling, then that element of your product for, for portfolio hold will be protected. Uh, the advantage of an LDI is you only need to put 3.5% in and gear it, so it effectively provides protection to the same level around about 10% of the fund. That, that, that's, that's, uh, that's good news. And then we're allowed you to invest um, some of that funding that was in guilds into those unconstrained bonds, so there's an advantage there. Now, in fullness of time, what you could do, if, you, if, if the fund was 100% funded, you could, in theory, put 100% of the fund into an LDI, or something close to that. And then, once you're there 100% funded, you then continue to match your liabilities. Um, obviously, we're not 100% funded at the point in time, and therefore, we're looking to invest in other areas to try and outstrip those returns uh, so that we actually get closer to 100%. <coughs> The, uh, the graph that's, uh, that's on the right is just showing where we are in terms of um, overall all membership. So, uh, as you can see, the, the green bars in the middle of the right, and this is the deferred pensioners now have over uh, 14,000 um, of those, um, and the, uh, the, the blue and the red bars on the left hand side, uh, this is showing the actives. So, the actives overall are growing, the number is growing overall. Uh, you can see the numbers of part times the red bar. Uh, are generally increasing, and the right blue bars on the left, which is the full time actors, uh, those are slowly uh, reducing over time. So we're seeing a shift in terms of the <coughs> demographic, um, but overall the numbers are uh, increasing. Um, so, what we're doing over the next, uh, the next uh, six to 12 months, um, as I've said, we're investing, uh, we're, we're uh, implementing the changes in relation to those investment reviews, so those three managers that we've taken on, two of the bond managers and an LDI manager. Uh, we have the process of transferring the assets, uh, getting those things uh, in place, and there will be further work that we then do on back of that, reviewing that, considering all the implications of that part. The other um, big change um, that, that's come about, um, which we have working through the, uh, the detail of, um, was in relation to budget management. So, uh, general election back in, in May, um, budget announcement in the early uh, summer, and this follows on from announcements that have been made previously around reform in relation to uh, uh, LGPS. Now, um, what, the, uh, what the government is expecting uh, is that we move in some way to a more collaborative um, approach in relation to uh, the way that we manage pension funds. So the eight line funds across the, uh, across the country. Originally, uh, the government talked about should we be reducing those number of funds down, should we be going down to half a dozen funds that are run <coughs> on a different basis or run on different, uh, different uh, uh, mechanisms. Um, the evidence didn't suggest uh, that was an obvious um, uh, conclusion to, uh, to reach and more work was required. So bigger is always better, but we do need to consider those, those key issues in relation to pensions, which is this deficit that's increasing costs. We need to keep work on fusion as much as possible. We need to keep it affordable into the future. So we're going to try and find ways of, of, of managing this. Various consultations have come out, various requests for information. Um, what hasn't been a lot of is guidance, specific guidance to say, uh, this is what we're expecting you to do with this fund. Uh, but what has come out is an expectation that while the government is working through what it's actually going to legislate or what it's actually going to do, uh, that that shouldn't stop the government pension funds from talking to each other, looking at ways in which we can collaborate with other funds um, locally, set up new, uh, new vehicles or whatever. So down in London, they're setting up some investment uh, vehicles, looking at the London, uh, the London pension funds down there. Um, we have been working with some of our, uh, our close uh, colleagues in, um, uh, geographically with Cheshire, originally Cheshire and Staffordshire. And we looked to see whether there was anything we could do to help collaborate, uh, to, to, to work together, to, uh, to look at the, uh, uh, the investments that, that we had. Now, I mentioned earlier that we've got around about 300 million, uh, which is invested in general in um, passive equities. So 
this is just um, 300 million that gets, that gets passed over to the uh, uh, general, and they buy products which but they basically invest in stocks and shares which match um, uh, basic indices like FTSE 100 or whatever. Um, so in terms of um, the product itself, it's quite a simple product. Um, it delivers a sort of returns. It's based on whatever the stock market is doing. Obviously, we assume the stock market is performing good as well. Um, and really, all you're doing is, is you're buying a product that, that powerfully tracks that market, what, which, which search engines it actually takes up. Uh, fundamentally, it's quite, quite a simple, uh, simple product. And all pension funds pretty much have one of these uh, products within their portfolio. So we considered that this was an area where it would be a good start to go and speak to other authorities to say, what do you have in terms of your uh, passive equities? What, um, uh, who, who are you investing with? What sort of rates are you paying? What sort of indices are you following? What sort of returns are you getting? When we, when we originally spoke with the um, uh, Staffordshire in Cheshire, we did some work then, we all got three different passive managers. Uh, we pulled them all together, had discussions, and we found out were the fees that we were paying and um, Shropshire were actually lower than the others, and the other two organisations managed to reduce their fees on the back of uh, the fact that they could see that we were getting a better deal. On the back of that, they are then taking a step further. So now we're working, um, at work on seven uh, other uh, authorities, <coughs> again around the Midlands area, um, and looking to see whether we can actually pool all of our uh, passive um, investments. So that our 300 million would be linked up with other three, uh, 300, 400, 500 million from, from the other authorities and starts getting into the low billions then. Uh, and then you speak to a single manager and you say, uh, would you like to take over a portfolio of perhaps you know, four, five, six billion pounds? All of the decision making, uh, all of the solitary in relation to that remains with uh, Shropshire. But what you do is you're buying into a pool fund and you get that advantage uh, in relation to uh, economies, uh, economies of scale. So this is a first step, uh, and it's, it's about demonstrating that we are able to do some, uh, some work to improve, uh, improve the current situation. Uh, we're hopeful that that work will lead to uh, a further reduction um, in our fees. So that's all good. I mean, it might only save us thousands, it certainly won't save us uh, millions, um, but you'll actually have similar levels of return, same levels of, uh, of risk, uh, but lower fees. So that's a, that's a good start. Whether you can then extend that out into other more complicated areas, as I say, mentioned earlier, uh, we take on an, LD, an LDI manager, very few funds have got LDI managers in place. So there will always be a case of um, certain individual decisions being taken based on specific portfolios, um, <coughs> where there is that opportunity, we should be working together with the organisations to do that. Um, so where that's going to end, uh, nationally, uh, the um, uh, government are talking about, well, we, we need some sort of pooling vehicles, uh, pooled vehicles that are of the size of around about 30 billion. Um, if you look at the, uh, the going back to the um, uh, Steam Advisory Board, if you look at that national picture, uh, the amount of investments across the whole of the country amount to somewhere around 200 uh, billion pounds. So if you're talking about 30 billion pound uh, pooled schemes, you're talking about five, six, seven schemes across the country uh, that everybody would buy into. How would you break those down? What would they look like? Um, would they be based geographically? Would they be based on the types of instruments that you, 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 you have? Got? All of that detail might work through. So we're hoping that there will be um, a more formal announcement in the spring of next year, and that will help them to, to define uh, where we go. But fundamentally, uh, we are still working on the same premise of um, that's a couple of points, actual variation, uh, actual valuation, I should say. Um, the last valuation was in 20, uh, 2013, over three years, so our next one is coming up um, at the end of March, um, uh, starting next calendar year. That will therefore, uh, that will be work over, uh, over the summer and will lead to then um, the application information to the employee rate set for the next three years from the 1st of April 2017. So that's when that will come um, and then just to mention um, that we have the, uh, the annual meeting uh, <coughs> on the 12th of uh, November coming up. So um, I believe we're hoping that in here. Um, in Shire Washington, just having the one, uh, the one meeting uh, this year. And, uh, and that will be uh, filmed. And so you have the opportunity to, uh, to come along or watch it all again uh, on YouTube. Future, future so that's all we're going to uh, run through. So um, I'll leave it at that.
unless anybody has any specific questions. Oh, okay. Just need four funds. Okay. Four funds yeah. You talked about going to the provider because they're the fees. Yeah. Shouldn't it be about four funds? Yes. It, 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 there is a absolutely, uh, absolutely, and, and we have all sorts of different fee structures. The issue, the issue with, with passive is that fundamentally the return to cost of the various different passive managers are very, very simple. <coughs> so therefore, the fees the fees are very low, therefore, and you get the same level of return. In other areas, we have performance related fees um, where you know it agrees with to, to pay the amount of money across the managers um, uh, when you consider the fees that we uh, that we have to pay. But when we look at the returns, you know, everyone will be happy to get the percent percent return on their uh, on their uh, their bank account. So uh, so yeah, but but, but it, it, it's less of an issue. It's it's something.